What's happening everybody and in this video series we have been building our very own generative AI chatbot with Python exactly like the GPT 4.5 Turbo but for free. Why? Because we are using Google Gemini's free API. It's really really amazing. Ah, excuse me. It's really really simple and we have taken it to a whole new level. Why? Because we have literally given our AI a voice and we have given it ears already. So if you'd like to learn how to do that just check out my previous videos and now we are adding a wake word. Now what is a wake word? So my surname is Saigo, very very unique and I would like my AI chatbot to respond to when I call it Saigo Jr. Woo! So in other words, when I say Saigo Jr, the script is going to start to wow. listen so then we can give a voice prompt and then it's literally going to give us a vocal response. So enough chitty chat chat guys, please don't forget to like this video, put me something friendly in the comments but only if you're feeling friendly and share this with your friends and family and if you're enjoying this content from this baby face 28 year old then please don't forget to hit that follow button if you're not following me already. Now enough chitty chat 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 guys, let us get started. Now for us to start adding a wake word we need to head over into our project and enter and go into our terminal. In our terminal, we just need to ensure that our virtual environment is activated, which you can see on the left hand side if it is in brackets. If it is, then we can continue. If it's not, then just type in the name of your virtual environment, forward slash scripts with a capital S forward slash activate. That is for Windows users. So once in your virtual environment, we need to download two new libraries for us to start and get ready for our wake word. And the first one is PV Porcupine. So you simply install that by typing pip install PV Porcupine. Let's give that a second to install. Once that is installed, then we can install Pi Audio, which we need as well. You simply type pip install Pi Audio. And once those two libraries are imported, we need to import them into our project. So close your terminal and head to the top of our, our project, and we can import PV Porcupine as well as Pi Audio. And then we also need to, which is default with Python, we need to import struct. Okay, what is import struct? What structure allows us to do is that it allows us to convert our Python values into C structs, which is quite cool, which is needed for PV Porcupine. Now, what is PV Porcupine? If you head over into our web browser and you check out console.picovoice.ai, once you have created an account, which is absolutely free, this is the system which we will be using to create our wake word. So once you have your account, you'll see on top that you, there will be an API key, which you need to copy. Obviously, for security reasons, I'm not showing it here. But if you just scroll a little bit, you will be able to see that you can train a porcupine wake, book, wake word. So you want to click on there. And yeah, we just need to simply select our language. And now we can enter our wake word. So you spell my surname as S-Y-G-O. But that's not how it sounds. It's, it sounds like Sai Go Junior. So S, so for Sai, like, ha, huh? so you go S-I-G-H, Go and junior so there will be a mini me right in a mini you just give that a second once it's ready to be trained you can click on the microphone it may just ask you for microphone permissions there we go and then you can test it so if i say saigo junior it shows that it is detected once it is detected then we can click on train once you click on train then select the platform which you are using in my case it's windows and then you can click on download once the download is complete, what it's going to do is that it's going to download a zip folder. So once you have that zip folder, you just want to extract the folder. And in there, you will see a .ppn file. What you want to do is that you want to copy that file and head over into our project. And in our project, you just want to paste that ppn file in. Once you have done that, then we are ready to continue in our script. Just make note that you have your API key as well as your PPN file. Once you have that, then we are ready to go. So now let us continue. In our script above our, where we configured our Google Generative AI API key, just above that, we can start with the requirements which Porcupine needs for us according to the documentation. If you'd like to get your hands on the documentation, you can ju just head over to picovoice.ai forward slash docs. And on the left hand side, just navigate to Python. There is a great quick start guide on how we can get started, but I'm going to show you how you can do that in this video. So enough to chat, let us get started. So first we need to initialize some global variables for the porcupine configuration. We do that by creating some empty variables. First one, we're going to create a porcupine variable. So porcupine equals to none. Then we need to create another variable which will handle our Pi audio instance. So we'll call that PA. So PA equals to none for another empty variable. And lastly, we need a instance to handle our audio input. So we're going to call that um, variable audio stream. So audio underscore stream equals to none. Now we need to create two functions. So the first function which we're going to create is to initialize our porcupine for a custom wake word. So to do that, we're going to type define and then let's say initiate uh, underscore porcupine open and close our brackets and our two little dotty keys 
Now in our function, we're going to access our porcupine PA and audio stream variable, but we're going to access them as global variables. So to do that, we're simply going to type global porcupine, global PA, and global audio stream. Because that must be on a new line. There we go. That looks better. I uh, spelled audio stream wrong here. That's why the colors are incorrect. Let's try that again. There we go. Cool. Now we can continue. The next step is for us to create a porcupine instance uh, with the documentation or our access key and our custom wake word in it according to the documentation. So to do that, we simply want to type porc our variable porcupine or our global variable now. This is incorrect. Skip a line. Indent porcupine equals to pv porcupine dot create and open and close our brackets. Now in our brackets, we need to pass our access key as well as our PPN file, which we have created. So to do that, first we will give the keyword pass, our PPN file. So you go keywords underscore pass equals open our square brackets, single inverted commas, and then we can paste the relative path of our file. So you right click and click on copy relative path and you paste that in there. Now we need to give it our access key. So outside of our square brackets, we just put a comma, space, access, underscore key, equals to, and then our single brackets, and then you want to give your API key. So just for now, I'm just going to put a hash, and before we run it, I'll just quickly load my API keys, so then you can see how this all works. It's absolutely mind-blowing. I can't wait. Anyway, let us continue. Now we can initialize our Pi Audio instance by typing PA, passing our global variable, equals to Pi Audio dot Pi Audio with a capital P and a capital a, and we can open and close those brackets. Next, according to the documentation, there are certain settings or specific settings which we need to set for our audio stream. So to do that, we're going to simply type audio stream equals to PA dot open. We will open our brackets and yeah, we need to pass according to the documentation, the rate. So we'll say rate equals to porcupine dot sample underscore rate. Next, we need to set the channel of our audio. So you simply type channels equals to one next we need to give the format of our audio so it will be format equals to par audio dots and we'll give it a 16 bits instance so it's paint 16. next we need to say that the input is equals to true then lastly we need to say the frames per buffer so frames per buffer equals to porcupine dot frame underscore length Great, now that's the first function which we have completed according to the documentation of Porcupine. Now we can create a function which will constantly listen for our wake word. So to do that, we just want to indent back, indent back and say define listen. We can call this listen underscore for underscore wake underscore word. Right, and our two little brackets and of course our two little dot keys. Then in our function, we can just give a print statement so then we know that our script is listening for us or listening out for us. So we can simply print your AI is standing by. So then we know that our script is running and it's ready and listening for our wake word. So then once we have done that, let's just add a full stop there. Then we can say, so while it is listening, so while true with our two little dotty keys, we want it to read the audio from our microphone. So to do that, you simply want to type, we'll create a new variable PCM equals to struct. So this is according to the documentation where the audio needs to be in a certain format for porcupine processing. So it's struct dot unpack underscore from. We can open our brackets and in there, two inverted commas with an H space with a asterisk or a star and space porcupine dot frame underscore length and then we need to pass the pcm now what this is going to do is that it's going to convert our audio format into the required format which is needed according to the porcupine documentation for the audio processing according to their system so next once we have done that we can process the audio and then so that it can constantly check for the wake word to do that we can just skip another line and then we can create the variable Keyword index, keyword underscore index equals to porcupine dot process, open our brackets, and then we'll process the text, which is in the variable PCM. Cool. Now we need to give it an instruction for when the wake word is detected. So I just skip another line. We can say if keyword underscore index is greater than zero with our two little dotty keys, then it must print. I see that we've got an error above. We'll check that now, but we wanted to print. So as soon as it's awakened once we've given the keyword we wanted to say okay um your ai has awakened 
that sounds quite cool. So what have we done wrong here? Keyword index spelling. This keyboard of mine is not so friendly. Anyway, there we go. Once we've done that, then we can give a break statement. This will exit our loop as soon as the wake word is detected. Now, finally, we can initiate our, our function by typing INIT or the name of your function, initiate porcupine, which was our first function which we created, open and close our brackets. Next, then we want to start our function to constantly listen to the wake word. So we named that function listen for wake word. Then we can open and close our brackets. Great. Now, once that is done, according to the documentation, at the end of our script, it needs to do some cleanup. So the cleanup to do is at the bottom of our script under the TTS underscore engine, what we can do is that we can type porcupine dot delete open and close our brackets and then our audio stream we must close that as well so audio underscore uh, stream dot that is close open and close our brackets then for our power audio it's pa dot terminate open and close our brackets awesome now that's literally it let me get adding my api keys and let's give this a shot now let me just check that my volume is loud enough and let's start our script terminal should open Okay, we got a area. Let's just have a look. Not a social. Uh, okay, let's just have a look here. So our area is over here. We didn't allocate where our audio is read from our microphone. So we'll go PCM equals to audio underscore stream dot read. Open our brackets and we'll type porcupine. Where are we? Porcupine dot frame underscore length. Great. Now let's try that again. Let me make the terminal larger here. There we go, your AI is standing by. So now we can chat, 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 or whatever. And, but let's say the magic word, Saigo Jr. Please tell me what 10 plus 10 minus two times 500 divided by three is. See, now it's 200. Oh, how's that? How's that? Let, let's do that again. Let's close this. Let's restart this. Let's do that again. Let's ask it a longer question. So, chitty chat, let's talk, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we got a question. Hey, Saigo Jr. I would like to work out my arms today, but I don't have any gymming equipment. What can I do around the house where I can possibly work out my arms to make them a lot bigger because they're really small? There, it shows us what we wrote. Now, let's see. Bicep curls. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart and hold a dumbbell in each hand. Bend your elbows and curl the weights up to your shoulders, then slowly lower them back down. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, now that's nuts. Tell me now, that isn't insane. So if you're at this part of the video, I'm sure that you're as excited as, uh, as excited as I am. So please hit that like button if you haven't already. Pop me something friendly in the comments and share this with your friends and family. And if you want to see this on the big screen, guys, please don't, check, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel as well. But until the next video, guys, cheers.